Welcome to the Rusted Garden. This is the next video in a series that I'm experimenting in and trying to grow mushrooms at home. It was sort of a failure. Nothing uh, spawned. I didn't grow any mushroom mycelium. Today is February 8th and all of these were started somewhere between December 10th and December 23rd. So there's been six or eight weeks that have gone by to give these a chance to do something. Good news is I didn't grow any real mold or fungus or have any problems except for one container that was actually on the ground by my plants when I had fungus gnats and of course fungus gnats got in here. I had these sitting in different places in the house just to see if temperature made a difference or darkness made a difference. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open these up, talk about the failure, then I'm going to cut to a video that will show you the new substrates that I'm using and we'll just kind of build along. Hopefully some of you are giving this a try or have more experience and can help me where I'm going wrong but I'm going to figure this out. So these jars are really from the uh, December 15th and this was um, cow manure and cocoa core. I'm cutting out the cocoa core. People say you can use it but not a lot of videos have used it. So what I'm going to do this round, I'm going to use actually cardboard, straw, and cow manure straight um, that's been uh, pasteurized and I'm going to use uh, shredded hardwood. But there's nothing in here. Some of my spawn prints went in here, thin slices of mushroom went in here, nothing has grown. I'm going to put everything in the bag here and throw in some grain spore and my uh, spore prints from last time and maybe something will grow out of here. This was way too soggy. That's one I think the biggest mistake I made. I made the substrate too wet and I think it has to be moist and moist through but not soaking. Again nothing, well at least I think nothing. Yeah, nothing grew in here. Now this is what I did on the 23rd. This was with the uh, spore grain that I had to grow oyster mushrooms and this is cocoa corn on the top with a bed of straw which is the preferred substrate for the oyster mushrooms and nothing grew in there and again I just think it's it's too wet and I'll open up one more I'm gonna keep all this and hopefully I'll grow something in it I'll put it out in my compost this was on 1215 this was cocoa core boiled half of manure couple ways that I did it and again nothing so no real um, growth well no growth <laughs> period here you can see uh, some of the grains that I dropped on top and they've swell they've swelled and there's a little mold growing around them but that's that's not mycelium so again I'll check this one out but nothing and I would see white threads all over the place if things are going well so nothing grew and again too wet so let me finish these clean them up and then I'll cut back and show you um, what I'm doing for the next round. It's February 8th and this is the next video in my series of growing mushrooms and again this is an experiment I'm learning sort of as we go through the series so I'll show you I'll cut over to it in shortly but I had no success growing mushrooms in the first round um, good news was there was no mold, no fungus, but nothing grew. So I'm going to start over and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to cut out the cocoa core. So I have cow manure to go for the white button mushrooms. I've got oyster mushroom, oyster mushroom um, spawn on green and I also bought an organic mushroom that I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with those. But here I have hay boiling to sterilize it, hardwood in the back boiling to sterilize it. And I'm going to go with the uh, substrates that seem to work more for people. Why I decided to add in the cocoa core was because it's supposed to work, but it's not used regularly. So I'm kind of simplifying it. And over here, I have cardboard and boiling water. And I'm going to use this for the oyster mushrooms. And basically, you just separate the cardboard with nearly boiling water. And I'll show you, you know, how I use all these things. Uh, today's February 8th, so the first round of growing the mushrooms really weren't effective. Positive side of it was I didn't grow any mold or fungus or anything like that. Um, but I also didn't grow any mushrooms, no mycelium formed. And I think the major mistake was I had everything too wet. So I've changed up a couple of things. I removed the cocoa core. I'm just going with straight straw, cow manure for the white button mushrooms, cardboard that's new, and then 
shredded hardwood that was boiled. So all of this is sterile. So I'm going to try and get the mycelium growing from white button mushrooms, oyster mushrooms here, that is grain spawn, which is supposed to be spores of the oyster mushroom in there. I was looking for a oyster mushroom, couldn't find one. This is a um, maitake, I think, hens in the woods mushroom. On a scale of one to five, five being the hardest, they say this is a four out of five to grow. So I don't really expect this to be successful, but it's for demonstration. Let's pretend it's an oyster mushroom. The white button mushrooms, supposed to be a one out of five. Oyster mushrooms, one out of five. Right now I'm betting zero. Before I get to this, just quickly. So in the bottom here, I put a piece of cardboard, a piece of dried cardboard and that's to absorb any excess water. So this is nice and moist but not soaking wet. And in there I dropped about seven pieces of the green spores for the oyster mushrooms and I will cover that up after the video. Here I'm using white button mushrooms and this is a technique I saw online. Straight cow manure halfway in and what you can do the knife is sterile, my hands are sterile, is cut a mushroom in half and in theory, it's best to get, you know, fresh mushrooms organically grown. You can shave very thin pieces of the mushroom. And let's get rid of that. That's too thick. Let's just move that to the side. And then lay them in your substrate. In this case, white button mushrooms are supposed to love cow manure. So I just laid a few pieces in there and I will cover that with cow manure. In the hardwood, same thing. Filled it up halfway. It's not soaking, but it's moist all the way through. Oyster mushroom seeds, I will cover that up. And I'm also putting some in a jar. And I'm going to do these in a, a couple of different ways, you know, off the video. And, you know, I'll show you them in the next video how things go. Hopefully they grow. The other mistake I think I could have made is these. this is a uh, white button mushroom. And I showed you how to make spawn prints. And what you do is you cut the mushroom out to expose the gills and you just lay them flat down. I did them on white index cards and I thought that perhaps the index cards have some sort of chemical on it and maybe it harmed the spores because when I did my original one I just cut the index card into thin strips. Maybe that paper got wet, there's some chemicals in there, they didn't like it. So I'm going to use foil because there's nothing bad on the foil or in the foil that's going to harm the spores that drop. So we'll see how that goes. And I'm going to let this go for 24 hours and then I'll set something up too. The other method that I learned was using cardboard. And all you do is you cut up some cardboard to about the size of the container you want, pour boiling water on it, and then it will separate. So here's some I already started. And I'm just going with three layers of the straight cardboard like this, then a layer of the corrugated put the seeds on there, another layer of the ridged, and then put on three. And that's just to hold moisture in there. Mm, don't use that as a magic marker on it. Two. The towel is to absorb excess water. You want this to be soaked through but not dripping. Another piece. And this is supposed to be a good way to really grow the mycelium. Now this seed, and right now I believe it's me, not what I purchased, could be that it's not viable. So I or also ordered from, uh, I think it was fungi.com, wooden dowels that have been inoculated with mycelium from the oyster mushroom. And again, oyster mushrooms are supposed to be really easy to grow. So the wooden dowels are my backup plan if I can't get anything going. And you just cover that. and. I'll probably maybe do one more layer, but this is only going to go to about here. It's going to stay moist, lit on it. We'll see how it goes growing the spawn. And again, what I wanted to get was an oyster mushroom, an organic oyster mushroom, but they didn't have any. And all you really have to do is cut the mushroom in half and you get to an area that is not, should not be covered in any molds or fungus and you would just thinly slice out a piece of it, lay that in your substrate, and that would be the way to go. What I did discover though, that the, uh, what is it, hen in the woods, the maitake, 
It's delicious. I've never had it before. So I'm going to eat that for lunch. So anyway, I'm on round two. I've simplified it to straight straw, straight manure, straight cardboard, straight hardwood. I'm going to try up a couple different things, see how it goes. And keep in mind, today's February 8th. This video is an ongoing series. It's an experiment. And it's not going to be completed till probably about June. If you're having success, have some better ideas, let me know. If this fails, then we're going to go to more store-bought um, inoculations from syringes and all kinds of stuff. But I want to see, you know, what I can do on my own. Please check out my blog, www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com, and also check out my YouTube videos. Thanks.